So I tell you guys, we might crack on if that's okay. We, we, we've got, I see all the attendees uh, coming in. So uh, obviously del delighted to have you here today. Um, so Paul McClatchy is obviously my name and, and our purpose and engage people is to align business with talent. And I guess as, as part of our working week, I get to, to speak to lots of fabulous people. Uh, so obviously, Margaret, you're, you're very welcome. I, I know you're an experienced uh, human resource consultant and executive coach. You obviously work with a number of business leadership teams and individuals, uh, improving their leadership capability. Uh, and it's very much, I, my understanding is your, your focus is very much on the people dimension. And I know, I know from our previous experience, you obviously work across the uh, the financial services property pharmaceutical and healthcare space um uh, Mary, Mary we, we we've obviously worked together o over <clears throat> a number of years and I, I know you've spent the last five years in a sort of a, what, what you would describe as a standalone yeah. HR role yeah. with, uh, with with Pfizer uh, and I, I know you were mentioned they're a small but ambitious company I, I would mm -hmm. say you know there, there's uh, I would I would describe them more as sort of a medium-sized company but in a very exciting space with the reg tech uh, sorry the fintech and reg tech space and I, I know you guys operate in over over 30 countries That's so right. Uh, we're just trying to Margaret. Obviously, lot, lots to get through today, and there's a number of different angles. Um, but I, I maybe I might ask just your own personal experiences, maybe over the last two or three months. You know, maybe how you guys have sort of adapted to it. So, Margaret, I might might start with yourself. You know, so maybe take us back to February about what normal looked like and how, how you've adapted yourself over over recent months. Um, thanks, Paul, and lovely to be here. Um, thanks for inviting me. In terms of myself, I suppose I, I my my role as a consultant, I'm an independent consultant, and I have a number of different clients. So actually, I, I was I work sort of from home and from an office. So I had that hybrid structure going on already. So that piece was less of a um, a challenge for me, and, and I enjoyed that the the. I was going to say the silence of working for, from home, but that's probably the piece that has changed because the house has become now five people rattling around and um, in it versus one. Um, so that's been a, a big challenge. Um, being much more structured with workloads has been um, in terms of, particularly in, in the home, um, broadband, you know, five people using the internet, you know, whether that be on school, for school, for work at the same time. And negotiating that is probably harder than negotiating a business deal. Um, so that, that, that as well. And I suppose from, from my own perspective, because I do a lot of one-to-one -one coaching, keeping the uh, connectivity with clients and particularly at a time when they were largely overwhelmed with their own workload and their own life and the impact that this is having on their life and how to support them through that um, and you know if I'm honest people some people just had to say look actually we need to just stop for a little while um, I don't have capacity for some of for for some of this work, organisations made decisions to take a step back because they had so much going on in the here and now and um, because of the crisis. And uh, so I found that certainly by April, uh, organisations were getting their heads around how they needed to work and what they needed to work and were starting to re-engage much more proactively in terms of how do they need to support people? Um, how do they need to support themselves, the leadership teams, um, in terms of not just, I suppose, dealing specifically with where they are now, but also how do we move out of this? How do we, where are we going to be six months and 12 months and what, what do we need to do? Um, so that was, that's, I suppose, personally, that's been great because, you know, you go through the, the piece of where is business going and that, 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 that shaky piece, which is, you know, the, the ambiguity of will we all come out of this? Will organizations want to invest? Will we all have jobs? And, and, you, and you understand that the, the real connectivity within, I suppose, the, the, the business community and, uh, you know, the suppliers that, that organizations and companies that rely on. And, um, and, and the other, I suppose, just other pieces that actually how lovely the relationships have been and have, have changed because of the connectivity outside of the workplace. Um, so we're meeting each other in each other's homes or, or maybe offices, but that actually through Zoom and through these these platforms that people are meeting each other at the same place and in the same place, we're at the same level. And that's been really open and I found that interactions now, the business interactions have become much more human. Yeah, yeah, very good. And Mary, from your side, so I, I think mm -hmm. it's fair to say you, you, you guys were operating, not, not, not a dissimilar sort of hybrid model. You've obviously got people in lots of different countries. Um, so how, how much of an adaption was it for, for well, for, for maybe focus on yourself personally, first yeah. of all, and then from a team perspective? Yeah, I think for, for me personally, um, it's, it's been a good learning because 
we have operated for the past number of years with um, teams in Singapore, in Sydney. So these are teams that we've relocated from Ireland and um, we have Bermuda as well. And it's been really interesting for me to almost step into their shoes to see what it's like not to work in the office, to work outside the office. So that's been really useful. And uh, it's, it's enabled me, I suppose, to, to plan and um, for how to keep them included going forward. So I think that's been been a great learning. Uh, like everybody, you know, it's, it's been a struggle. You're trying to juggle work, home life. Um, and also from a HR perspective, you have that concern about your people. So um, at the start of, of the, when we started to work remotely, I cleared the diary and I spent um, a couple of days just focusing on, on calling actually all of our employees, just having a chat with them. And initially the, the calls were about, uh, you know, they would say, oh, I'm working on this project, I'm working on this and update me on their tasks. So, uh, because that's what they're used to in, in conversations. So I had to say, no, hang on, this is not about your task or your project, this is about you. How are you coping? Do you have everything that you need? And, uh, you know, what can we do for you? So again, as, as Margaret said, it's bringing it back to that human, a human level. Um, mm. I think sometimes HR can be, and it needs to be a lot about analytics and data and reports for the business. And that's the way the profession has changed and is moving towards that. But I think this, this COVID and remote working has given us an opportunity to kind of step back and look at, you know, well, what's important? Yes, reports and everything that the data is important, but it's also the people and that connection with them. So I think that's been a great learning for, for me from this whole experience. And, and Mary, in relation to those conversations, I mean, what, what are you listening for when you're speaking to someone? Um, you know, so, so it's obviously more focused on the individual's well-being yeah. as opposed to, you know, are you hitting your, your targets, KPIs, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what are you listening for that would lead you to, uh, you know, maybe the next phase of questions? Then? And, and this would be useful maybe for some of our, the HR uh, um, community who, who, who might be listening. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, so I suppose the, the object of the objective of call for me was really to, to check, you know, infrastructure, but also, you know, their mental health and, you know, what sort of outlet they had. Were they in an apartment, for example, on their own and, um, you know, maybe working in their bedrooms and, you know, taking that into consideration? Because I think sometimes we make assumptions about people and um, we might say, you know, somebody's really sociable in the office. So we think that, you know, when they're outside the office, they're the same, that they have a lot of social interaction. It may not be the case. Um, I was really conscious of, um, so we have, a, we've a wide, wide, um, you know, culture of different, it's, it's great. We've different backgrounds, different, um, you know, cultures working within Visor. But I was very conscious that some people um, who've come, say, for example, our Indian colleagues, um, they wouldn't see their families for a long time. And um, they had planned to go back for holidays this summer. That couldn't happen. They didn't have a wide network, some of them. And I just felt that they needed, um, you know, they needed to feel part of, of a community here. And they needed to have that, you know, that the work was, would provide, I suppose, what, mm. was, what was missing from from the family setup, so um, yeah, I, I was really looking for people who were maybe feeling a little bit isolated and yeah. didn't have as much mm. social interaction a, as others, um, and yeah. so that was that was key for me. Yeah, very good. And we, we might come back to you know working through the individual scenarios, you know, and, and you mentioned the sort of infrastructure there, which is which is yeah. really around someone yeah. sort of yeah home setup. Margaret, from your experience, so I, I know you you're, you have a sort of a pr approach, you work with both the employer and the employee, you know, and, and we're all, you know, as we were saying at the start of this, this, this has obviously been a, a huge, a huge uh, uh, leveler, you know, for all of us. But if you were working with, say, a people manager and you were looking to tease out, you know, how they're going to work with their team, is, and what, what sort of questions do, do you start with? And maybe how, how does that conversation evolve? So in terms of, I suppose, First thing, I suppose, in terms of where we're at, and is well, first of all, is understanding where are we at. Mm. So, as an organisation, where's the organisation at, and then individually, the team, and then individuals, yeah. where are they at? Um, but there's lot, you know, lots of great material out there. But I mean, the bottom, you know, I've seen a nice model, which is, you know, we're in this three phases. There's a, the emergency or the crisis phase, which is where everybody, you know, it's, you know, shoulders to the wheel. There's a huge amount of energy. People have real passion for getting through this and helping each other and huge, huge connectedness. Mm -hmm. Then there's this sort of, you know, the phase which is 
you know, nearly a, a, ret a retreat. People are exhausted, they're fatigued, their you know, motivation levels go down. The, the, the continuation of this emergency has real impact on how people, how people operate and, ha and how they think and how they feel about things. And then there's recovery. Um, the future focus. What are we going to deliver? Where do we see ourselves in six or 12 months? And um, each, I suppose, um, each manager, this is one of the questions I'll be asking is, where is your team in that regard overall, mm -hmm. in terms of the work that you're doing, in terms of the, the, your, 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 the sense of the, the, um, the energy levels and motivation levels? And then individually, where is your team at? Um, and you will probably find that there will be people in different pockets of that or at different phases um, for different reasons. Yeah. Then there's the piece, I suppose, there's the, the personal map, which is, you know, can the, can, you know, what are the challenges, as Mary said, that each individual is facing? Is it a childcare challenge? Are they living on their own? Are they living with four other adults in a three bedroom house? Is, you know, what, what are the actual practicalities of, of what's impacted them? And then even going even deeper, I suppose, in terms of what's their personality? What's their, their style? How do they like to operate? Are they extroverts and are they missing having the connectedness with people in the office? Are they introverts who are loving being at home but, but are not, are maybe stepping back from the interactions mm. with their staff and are we losing their, their, what they can deliver for the organization and their contributions? Um, and I suppose back to this point, which Mary picked up on as well as this, this human piece that we are all, as, as with all of us businesses, we're great at putting the operational plans in place. And this boy, is there lots of plans for, for, for what we're dealing with? And they're changing every day in terms of the COVID and, and how, how do we get people back into office spaces? But um, what we also need to do very clearly is layer the human and the people plan on top of that. And that is, and as Mary said, that is back to basics, really understanding the individual, having empathy for where they're at and really, I suppose, not just understanding, but being flexible in, in your understanding of what their of what their challenges are, and those challenges will change on, on depending on where we are in the phases. You know, what the challenge we faced back in March is very different to the challenge we face now to what we might face in, in September, October, and people will be in different places. Once schools go back, once you know um, clubs and sports get back, people will start start you know start changing. So we're still in this interim phase. We're not finished yet. And I think that's one of the pieces is that this is all about how do we manage the interim? And then how do we, this was for, for team, team leaders it's, and, and employers, it's where, are we, where do we want to get to with this? Where are we going to be actually in 12 months time? And how is this going to influence what the organization looks like then? Yeah. And then I think that piece for me is what do, our, what do each individual employee and, and the teams of employees, what is it that they are looking for in that organization that's going to exist in 12 months time? Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of balancing the, <clears throat> so the, the sort of the business is the business in terms of the business objectives and, and I, you know, the vast majority of companies have obviously, you know, they would have had uh, their, their 2020 strategy and plans in, in order to achieve that. Um, and there's obviously working with the individuals now and then, you know, looking at the business objectives. What, what in your experience, Margaret, maybe over, you know, recent months, what gets in the way of that sort of human interaction piece? Is, is it that an impatience with business, do you think? Or is it just, you know, the, the uncertainty that exists at the moment? Or what? Or for, maybe for either of you as to what you think are the, the challenges for a business that really wants to get back on its feet as quickly as possible uh, and wants to be empathetic, but at the same time is also looking at, you know, the viability of the business in future. Um, so I, I know it's a big question, but any, any sort of, uh, observations or, or, or thoughts? Um, I think it was, it, uh, what I would see is some of the challenges are one is it's the real clarity. It's the, it's, it's the, comp it's the company or the leadership or the employer um, prioritizing what needs to be done hmm. and also communicating that very clearly to the employee group. Um, the, you know, particularly with distance, particularly with, you know, remote working, um, the conversations that are had in a, you know, in a meeting or, or outside a meeting or by the water cooler are not happening. People are not pick, picking up the, their ability to pick up what's going, you know, the grapevine doesn't, is, is, is not there anymore. Mm. And so how do people know what's going on? Um, and I think, you know, this is back to this piece, but there's a great leveler in terms of the relationship between 
employer and employee and there's a piece here where the trust and the greater the trust that's shown and given um and i think that that is, is it, that to me is a big obstacle where yeah. there where the trust isn't there whether that be uh, you know historically not there or because genuinely maybe some people just find that difficult to mm. do to give away they might they feel like they're giving away something that is a big big inhibitor and a big obstacle for people um in terms of and for businesses moving forward yeah and Mary, if, it, if it's okay to say, I, yeah. I, it sounds to me like you, you, you guys have got, and it's obviously early days, but it, it sounds to me some of the steps you put in place, you seem to have got a lot of stuff right. You know, there, there seemed to be a good, a good sort of understanding across the business um, as to where, you know, there was a realistic, you know, um, judgment as to where, where things are at at the moment from, from the employee's mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, what, what, what sort of observations do you have and maybe considerations for other companies? Um, I think, you know, on the outset, when we started um, working remotely, uh, you know, we, we all came together, senior management team, people managers and, and myself, and, you know, we, we came up with a communication plan. And I think that that was really key and um, that everybody was bought into this, this communication plan. So um, what we did was every Monday we have a company update and it's led by our CEO. And it's it's informal, and um, it gives an it gives a business update at the start, but then it's open to all employees. You know, any questions that they want to ask, and um, you know, the, the CEO Connor Crowley, he's he's been fantastic to be honest. He um he kind of set all, up the tone by, you know, he he was understanding that people were nervous, insecurities were there, and you know, he offered it, and genuinely he said, you know, if any of you are having financial difficulties, let me know, and, and we'll try and, and help you out during this this phase, and reassure them that the company is very profitable, there's great, you know, sales pipelines, their jobs are secure, and I know that's not the same for every business, but I think for us, that really kind of set the tone at the start for how we'd move forward then throughout the, the remote phase, and there's been great feedback on that. So I think really having the senior management buy-in from the CEO down is key and uh, for, for them to communicate directly with colleagues, I think you know that's really important and it's a great benefit um, because it, it makes that connection uh, even stronger. Yeah, and I, I mean, that, you both seem to be very much aligned on that clarity piece, you know, to try yeah. and, uh, you know, to generate that really as, as best as possible across the team. And it, it probably results in less, uh, you know, panic for want of a better phrase, you know, if, uh, yeah. okay. And Mary, just in relation to the individuals then, so, so we spoke about infrastructure, Margaret, you, you had mentioned to me um, a sort of a heat map type analogy, which I thought was very smart, you know, and it's looking at the individual cases. Uh, Mary, do you want to talk about, you know, maybe when you're when you're identifying someone's situation? So mm -hmm. if, if it is a case that, for example, their role, uh, you know, may w would have been in the office in the past and there's a sort of collaboration, yeah. communication piece, what, what, what sort of factors are you looking at? And maybe from a time frame perspective, and then after maybe, Margaret, it'd be good to hear your thoughts on the time frame to so um what we have done is um we we've asked um our employees to let us know and um, we were making a priority list for bringing um colleagues back into the office so we've asked people to reach out to myself directly um and give them the opportunity to give us feedback some people are as you know we said earlier some people are really enjoying working from home it's suiting them at the moment they can balance childcare and work for others, it, it doesn't work. And I think they're the people that we want to focus on, on bringing back to the office. So yeah, we're giving them the opportunity to give us feedback and then we'll review it on, on a case by case and, and try and get the priority people back in first. So that's, that's the, the um, plan for us. And from a uh, you know the the health and safety, which is obviously uh, yeah. whenever whenever everyone started work remotely, one of the first things you know someone said to me is you know get get yourself a good chair, and I said yeah I yeah never, I never I never, I never <laughs> really thought about that, but so you, 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 yeah yeah you you know quick enough <laughs> yeah uh, so um what what sort of steps then I've, I mean do you think are, are sort of practical then in that regard? We're obviously a few months in, so a lot of companies yeah, have yeah. maybe may addressed this already, but yeah, is, is there sort of basics that you think we should all be getting right? With without getting too much into the ergonomics of your home setup yeah, yeah no definitely definitely i think um what what uh we, we we've a great office manager and um you know she was on hand to ship and courier out chairs to individuals homes so that they had their chair from the office at home and um, we had uh, th their screens couriered out to them as well for the large screens so that they wouldn't be working on a laptop for the whole day 
especially with our developers, you know, they, they need mm -hmm. um, they need the two screens. So it was things like that, you know, we made that investment at the start and that really set people up to continue on. So I t I hopefully we've got that right. Um, and Wi-Fi connection was was another issue. So we, we arranged, you know, Wi-Fi dongles for people who are having connectivity problems and stuff. So it was just taking that extra step just to make sure that people were set up and in, in a good work environment. Yeah. But also taking into consideration that um, they were at their desks for the, for the whole day. And yeah. I had gotten feedback that people were working kind of after hmm. the time they would normally finish. Yeah. So uh, to, to help with that, we introduced um, a, a step challenge. So we sent Fitbits out to all of our staff and now we have a weekly competition to wow. see um, who's, yeah, it's very, very competitive. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But it's worked really well. And these are just small steps and, uh, you know, people stand up now when they're doing their meetings and stuff. And it's just, as I say, it's just doing that, those small steps to make people, people feel engaged and to feel that actually, you know, the business cares about them and their welfare. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And, and uh, you, you guys have uh, some fairly entertaining uh, meetups, sort of social meetups, am I right in saying? We do indeed. Yes, we do. Uh, so I think in when you're working remotely, you, you can't underestimate your, your sports and social committee. If, if you don't have one, I would suggest, you know, definitely set one up. So ours is made up of volunteers um, from across the organisation and they are given full ownership of a budget and they decide how they're going to spend it. So that's really given them the ownership and it's been fantastic. At the moment, we are putting together a Visor cookbook. So we've asked all of our colleagues to come up with a recipe um, that celebrates their culture actually and, and their background. So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, so that's going on at the moment. And last week we had uh, Barry Murphy, who is a comedian and uh, works with Ike Spain. And uh, they're actually doing it. It's really, really good. They're doing um, bespoke quizzes um, online for, for employees and companies. And what they do is they actually interview people in the organization and uh, you send them on samples of internal mails, for example, and then they make a quiz based on your organization and your company and, uh, you know, our CEO and our senior management team, they, they got an awful time <laughs> during the quiz, but all, all in good humor. It was really, really fantastic. So, you know, uh, things like that, you know, it's, it's a little bit of fun as well. And I think that's important. It's really important. Yeah, very good. And Margaret, on your side, I was, I was going to ask us to maybe when some of your clients are coming back to work, but we, we, we can come to that now. And any sort of, uh, so, so from our side, uh, we, we sort of have Friday evening meetups. Um, we've been amazed actually as to how quickly craft beer can be delivered now. We found a service. <laughs> you, 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 can, you can order it one day, it'll, it'll arrive the next, you know, and everyone sort of takes pictures and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, like it ha and, and all the quizzes and stuff now, you do actually get to spend a lot of time together Um you know, on, on sort of the Friday or, or whenever um, people decide to do it now. And obviously the video technology from our side has been, a sort of, you know, a, a really a game changer in terms of uh, uh, both from the service we're able to offer to our clients as well as, you know, just conversations amongst ourselves about some of the processes. Uh, and anything from your side, Margaret, whether, whether it's within Bridgespan or, or within your, your, your sort of client base that you found yeah. really works well? Um, well, I suppose, you know, I suppose where, the, where I'm come from is, is probably, it's very small business. So we don't, you know, so so, our, so it's much more spontaneous. But actually what, what has worked for us is exactly this this forum where we're actually see, we, we're talking to each other, we're looking at each other. And we don't necessarily always have an agenda, but it's just to, to, to catch up, have a coffee. And um, what I've talked talk to some of my clients, that that piece around um, having the, the no meeting agenda, just like it's the coffee or the beer meeting, whether it be Friday or Monday, well, that that actually is something that's really tangibly um, uh, been a benefit. And, and some people are saying that actually they know more about their teens now than they did before COVID. Yeah. Um, people specifically um, saying that, particularly where people have, have maybe been remote working within a, an organisation that doesn't do remote working, are now feeling much more part of that organisation. And they feel much more included and because it's a level playing field for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, look, I have to say, doing the, the, the company meetings in the park has been lovely, you know, socially distant coffee in the sun, and we've been blessed with the weather, so that's been fantastic. But but not doing that, I, I do think actually the level of communication has absolutely increased, um, and the breadth of the conversations in those communications. I think the other, the, the, the bit to manage is that it doesn't become all about the conversation so it's, it's having the, the right structure to make sure the business gets done too oh, and yeah. because <laughs> um, there's so much going on and people are doing so many different things 
Yeah. And you know, it's lovely to see things, you know, people suggesting things that, you know, and are doing things like the the walk, you know, walking meetings. Um and as I said, meeting in the park or you know, the quizzes and having those having those outlets that they would not necessarily have done. And particularly, I suppose, back to the sort of so, sports and social, which is a fantastic, um, uh, up, you know, piece for any business to do. But sometimes not everybody participates in those. So mm -hmm. when you have, when you can, when you can deliver something that everybody will participate in, uh, or the majority of people, that really is a, a game changer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, m I might just mention at this point, just if there's any questions from any of the uh, the attendees, you, you can pop it through. Uh, there should be a, a chat at the bottom. Uh, you, you can post any questions and we'll come to them in a few minutes time. Um, just in relation, Margaret, to what you're hearing. So uh, this morning's Irish Times mentioned that there's 75% of traffic back on the roads in Dublin, which to me, is a surprise i have to say because i i would have thought even uh whenever we're you know hopefully free of covid19 that there would be less traffic on the road just because of remote work and and, and sort of new arrangements on that front um what well, anecdotally what what sort of stories are you hearing from your clients so obviously we're coming to the end of june now into early july are your clients starting to return to the office now on a, on a more regular basis or, or or what are you hearing yeah, certainly some of my clients have started the uh, rotated rotation of teams and people back into the office. Mm. Um, uh, when you just talked about the traffic piece, that's probably the, one of the biggest challenges. Um, people are, I know we talked, I suppose when we talked before, Paul, is that you know, the use of surveys, and Mary mentioned that, that you, you've been doing those in your business, mm -hmm. has been um, particularly uh, important in terms of keeping, getting feedback and understanding where people are at through all of the phases and keeping that up to date. And certainly what's arising now is people are saying, okay, well, as we move back into the office space, how are we getting there? If I'm reliant on public transport, how confident am I? Am I comfortable? And I think that's going to be a real a challenge for businesses is to, to, well, one is, I think businesses are looking at how many car spaces do we have, which is, and that is actually a conversation. Yeah. Who's going to, you know, can we use them? How else can we get into the office? Um, I'm not comfortable with getting on a bus or I'm not comfortable with getting on, a, on the on the train or on the Lewis. Um, obviously, they've come out now and, and face masks are going to be mandatory, but that means more people on the Lewis. And am I comfortable with that? Am I at risk? Am I in, that, in, in the vulnerable category? So what does that mean? Um, so that's that that is all those I suppose eggs all have to be cracked yet. And uh, but certainly people are getting back. There are people who really do want to. There are people who really need to because of their roles and whose roles really are office-based. And yeah. I suppose that, that's very clear and easy, um, you know, in terms of a decision. But there are others who, for differing reasons, are not ready yet. Um, yeah. As I said, childcare, they're vulnerable. Um, or also, they, how do they get there? Yeah. And, and that aspect. Um, but I also I suppose the feedback I'm getting is that for a lot of people, and particularly, I think, which is really interesting, it's starting from the top, They've seen this as a very positive experience. Mm. What they what they're they're experiencing, um, I suppose you know, um, forced forced experience is that this actually has worked um, in for the majority of people or for the in the for the majority of time. Not saying that it's going to be a five day a week or for organisations, but that there is real potential here to be more flexible and to do things differently. And I think that seed is definitely sown, and it's just where do we yeah. go with it? I, I was speaking to uh, Shane Craddock, who, who's a, um, a, a, a he's a, sort of an executive business coach now. And he, he would work with quite a few Irish uh, business owners uh, of, of all sort of shapes and sizes. And uh, there would have been a sort of a view, you know, maybe a sort of more of an old school view about remote working that when you're in work, you're in work. And when you're at home, you're at home. Uh, and, and to a degree from a, a headspace perspective, you know, there's, there's, there's something to be said about mm -hmm. that. But uh, Sh Shane was saying that some of his clients who, who would have been probably the the slowest to evolve into that mindset were actually you know privately really enjoying the remote piece you know whether it's uh you know and and, and some of these they, they would have been reasonably well set up at home which, which is obviously very useful yeah. but you, you do get significant time back and from a you know a hobbies health and fitness perspective so there's a few of our team now are running more than they've ever run before i'm certainly getting out on the bike uh, more um I, I would balance that though with that. So, so obviously within say the American multinational space and Twitter were very quick to promote the fact that they can, you know, manage remotely. And there was, there's probably an element of that uh, without being, you know, 
being sort of too, too much of the cynicism of that's a very good way of attracting staff um, who, who, who may not want to go into the office themselves the whole time. But there would be some companies whereby their staff are significantly more productive in the office and there probably are some conversations ahead. So I think definitely the public transport piece and if someone's living with someone who would be on the risk spectrum in relation to, you know, whether it's a, a respiratory, a, you know, a breathing issue or someone at a particular age or, you know, what, whatever it is. So that there's those factors the public transport piece but it's i think it's it's and i'm not going to ask you both individually about your own client base or or, or within Pfizer. but what what sort of questions would you start to ask maybe say say someone's a people manager who w would believe with reasonable justification that their team may be better in the office or some team members may be better in the office what what sort of questions or processes do you think they could start to explore you know it doesn't have to be super urgent you know but maybe coming into say september october they'd like to get things back on track yeah and, and any thoughts on that front um yeah i think for me um i would i would be asking the people managers um just to check in with the guys to see actually wh where where they're located from from the office and those questions that you mentioned paul you know do they live with somebody who's vulnerable and um, you know do they need to take public transport and actually to look at their role and say do they need to be in in the office you know can can that team function with that person working remotely and uh, when we return and it's it's really looking at that on, on a case by case and seeing where we can help people uh, and and giving them as much as we can um, a choice so you know obviously there'll come a stage where we won't be able to accommodate everybody but certainly we'll try and engage with people to see what works for them because there's so many differences out there and everyone's situation is different and it's really having that conversation with them that's important and making them feel that they're they're given the choice and that we are listening to them i think that's really really important yeah, yeah. And I, I think that choice piece, I mean, in, in an ideal world, uh, you know, there'd be an agreement of minds in relation to the role and that, you know, yeah. the, the, the sort of people are on the same page. And any thoughts on your front, Margaret, that you're, you're, you, you're sort of expecting maybe down the line or you're experiencing at the moment that, um, you know, maybe challenges you're hearing about that, that might come down the line in terms of trying to get people back in the office now? And I guess I'm probably talking slightly away from... So, you know, so I'm assuming, say, if someone does have a, a reasonable route, route to work mm. and there's no mm. issues there and yeah. it comes down to the choice of actually working from home or being in the office. Well, I, you know, I think there's two pieces. I think there's the, the aspect that Mary's talked about, which is the, the uh, health and safety, the, 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 the capability and, the, and all the, the transport and all those pieces. But on the second side, it was the organisation and what does it, how does it want to operate? Because that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And secondly, is that what are the team dynamics and how can the team operate best? And I think there's a piece around understanding for every organization and, and every team, um, understanding how has this, you know, what has worked about this period? So how has remote working worked for us? What have we done better than we used to do? What, what, what has been, what's our progress been? And what, what have we, what maybe, where hasn't it helped? What have we missed, or what have we what have we what have we lacked during this time? And I think there's a fundamental need to to understand to, to like analyze how things have worked for us. You know, to take away the COVID and all of that, but how has it worked? How could how could it even be better? And can we um, structure a hybrid? You know, whether it be a hybrid structure or a full remote working structure or not, what does it look like? But I think very clearly it has to come from the top because the organisation needs to have a really clear strategy about how does it want to operate. Um, because what you do, what you, certainly if I'm a people manager, I do not want to be having conversations with my staff about how this could be if that is not something that the organisation is willing or flexible enough to actually support. Yeah, that yeah. that would be a fear. I would I would have totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I think that's a really smart strategy mm -hmm. of looking at the objectives, you know, as to what we've managed to achieve. So what's gone well, and you know, how can we improve upon that, and and then sort of working together to design the you know the the the, the as to what's going to suit both parties best. Um, there's so, also, yes, I was going to say, there's also going to be specific events that have to be in the office. There, are the, yeah. so there's 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 the non-negotiables where where that and they could be a person's role or there could be aspects of a role. And then there's the the areas where you can be flexible. And it it, it is about putting all of that into the mix. Yeah. 
Yeah. And from, from a coaching perspective then, so uh, I, I remember coming across the term VUCA a couple of years back and at the time it was in relation to like climate change and Brexit and, you know, and obviously you paid attention to VUCA's volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. Uh, and Mark and I were just having a quick chat, Mary, before and we were saying, you know, if someone's an excellent accountant or a software developer to a degree, they can, you know, and, and even leadership skills, which are slightly more ambiguous to a degree, you know, mm -hmm. than, than a sort of a technical skill. In terms of for all of us to develop, the, you know, those sort of the, the skills around uh, complexity and uncertainty and any sort of, I'm not, I'm not going to put you both in the spot and say, you know, how, how, <laughs> how, 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 how do you coach this? But for, for all of us, you know, from a, from a culture perspective, any sort of thoughts as to what you've observed that maybe works well, whether it's your own clients or companies or, or, or other companies? Well, if I'm just going to be very practical about it and say, mm. you know, the VUCA world, which is, as you said, you know, a volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous is actually where we lived even before COVID. So, you know, to me, it's, it, we're, we are just, this is just a, a heightened mm. experience of that, that has, that has, has moved things on very quickly. But we, we, I mean, we've been talking about change as the new constant for years. Um, and I suppose some people, you know, as I've said, Paul, some people are more comfortable with that and some people aren't. So it's actually about coaching people to be more flexible in their mindset, to be more open at, um, to alternatives, to looking at different ways of doing things. And that goes from, if I'm going to do my coaching session face-to-face -face or by Zoom, that actually for me is a change. And, and, and so it's the small changes as well as the big changes. So what do, how do we, you know, how do, how do we address, we start with small steps, that lead us to big steps. Yeah. This is a, obviously a gigantic step we're taking because of, of COVID at the moment and what that has forced us is in a very condensed period of time. Um, but on the other side of that, and I, I was um, on a webinar recently and, and, I, and uh, um, uh, the, the speaker talked about VUCA, but actually talked about what, what, where we are now and what we have to deliver say from a HR perspective, from a leadership perspective, that volatility is, 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 is about you know, creating a vision you know, uncertainty is about giving clarity and understanding to people. The complexity is about what 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 do people need with complexity? They need, clar they need clarity. They need to they need really to understand what their priorities are, what they need to be focused on, and they need to be agile. And we, you know, again, all words that we're very used to, um, mm. and it's structured. And I suppose one thing that I would say for me um, is that like the employer is the anchor for the for. For their organisation and for for their people, and um, employees are looking for guidance. They're looking for structure. They're looking for ways to to move through this, and they're looking for that future vision. And if employers can can deliver that, I think that could be you know extremely um, important in terms of employee loyalty, employee retention, and I think how employers get through this phase, this VUCA phase, and they can look at it as a as a as a difficult period or they could look at it as a period that is lots of opportunity and i think that for me is the the, the switch that they need that needs to be yeah. you know turned yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, it, it really depends on the type of organization um, and the culture that's that's been there previously. So, um, you know, for us in particular, um, with fintech and subtech, it's very, and technology is very fast paced. And um, so there's been a lot of change uh, over the last, you know, number of years, a lot of growth. So I think our colleagues are are really used to that and they're, they're comfortable with change. Whereas I think there might be challenges for other types of business and organizations where maybe change is not embedded and innovation may not be happening as much that people have had to adapt and i think that could be where where the challenges are at the moment yeah yeah very good so a question for michael there uh, just in relation to um you know pe people joining the team so um I'll, I'll speak just briefly about the recruitment side of things so uh we we invested in a video interview platform back in january and it was, it was something we were looking at anyway just to speed up the process uh it, it's been a great and this is a hundred percent something that'll be you know a big feature i think for us and, and in our sector uh, whereby we conducted a 25 30 minute conversations with candidates before 
and you, we, the process still follows you know a similar theme uh, but but it moves things along a lot quicker and then the hiring manager or the employer can watch the videos in their own time um, and we find that it's, it's a very productive use of the individual's time as well as um, you know m- m- moving down the line now, depending on the role like we're, we're recruiting a CEO position for one of the big financial services companies at the moment uh, and the first round was done was done by video and the second round now will move on but the board have actually all see the individual now and so that, right, that, yeah. that, that, that's worked well and we've all sort of we've scaled up we're using the McQuaig personality profile testing which and, and we could probably debate for for uh, for hours about uh, the, the, the various different uh, profiling pieces so that that's been useful on that side I think, Mary, from a virtual onboarding mm-hmm. perspective, I think I'm right in saying that that's been something you, you guys have been engaged with over maybe maybe more at the moment, but over, over sort of a re- recent years. Yeah, uh, uh, we've needed to actually because we're, we're internationally based. So, um, you know, we would have interviewed through Zoom or, or Microsoft but um, Teams. But it's also been important for us to actually have that face to face previously, you know, because I think it's so important. And to be honest, we have missed that. We've adapted while we've been working remotely, but we have done a number of hires. And I think that from the induction piece, um, you know, we we do miss that uh, that connection in the office um, to, to make somebody feel welcome and part of the business. So I think we've all had to work a little bit harder to make sure that we're connected to the new hires because depending on their personality and also on their role, they may not have the visibility in the organization that they would have had if we were all in the office space. You know, people would see a new employee and say, you know, oh, hello, and walk up to them. So that's completely gone. So we have to just be conscious of it and make sure that that we are including them and everything that, that's happening. But it has been a challenge, and that's probably been one of the challenges of recruitment. I think the interview stage has been fine, but it's the actual induction piece that, that's been difficult. I think that the personal touch is, is missing. Yeah. I think um, we we so in March where you know obviously it was uh, a particular the, the period whereby it was becoming apparent that we were going to be a lot of people weren't going to be going back to the office. Uh, we we were we had a number of people who were due to start new roles and there was a pause for two weeks and I have to say it was challenging because um, the vast majority of those candidates would have would have left other roles and were expecting oh, yeah. to start new ones. Yeah. I would I would say the vast majority have have, be, have were remote onboarding and and because of the nature of sort of cloud based accounting packages and, and sort of software, um, it was fit for purpose to a degree. Um, I think the positives being just pe- people have been able to uh, you know when a meeting is set up for ten o'clock, people have to show up on time, which is good. Whereas sometimes in someone's induction, with the best will in the world, they could spend you know half the week waiting for someone else to finish a meeting and then com- you know come into that one. Uh, but I I definitely think you know and this is just up you know the view we have it's it's trying to transition people back into an office you know to a degree whether it's one step at a time to begin with and to spend time with people um and i mean looking at new or existing um employees in terms of that transition back in i mean are you would you expect you know maybe for either of you uh that it would be on a phase basis that people would come in for maybe one or two days and then, and then phase back in while they get used to a routine again um, yeah, I think for us, um, our plan is to bring initially around 20 colleagues back in and they will be the priority colleagues who've let us know that depending on their role or their situation that they'd like to come back in. So um, that w- we'll start with that to ensure that we still have the social distancing and everything in place for, for their safety. Um, another element is, is the induction training. So it's a requirement that we have um, induction training on, on COVID and health and safety before um, we bring colleagues back into the workplace. So I know that there's a number of, of companies on, who are offering online training and um, who can do this. So I think that's that's a really good next step for me to look at personally to see what training is out there and um, to make sure that we're compliant before people come back in. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, and anything on your side, Margaret, that you've identified in, in terms of, is, is it sort of a phased approach with most of your client base or what, what, yeah, what are you experiencing? No. No, absolutely phased, phased approach. And also, I think what a number of my clients mentioned is they're now looking at tech, you know, technology to support the onboarding process. So we're, again, very, very dependent on face-to-face and, and people being in the office and working with each other is they're looking at how can they build I suppose, online training where they may not have had it before and specifically online I suppose, onboarding and integrating that into their into their system. So if, they, if for example, accountancy firms, and as they take on their trainees, how do they, yeah. they need to build programs that they can deliver 
you know, both the training and, and but also they need very structured planning around networking, around mm -hmm. developing relationships within the organization. Um, and there, so all of these pieces that of course were, were structured need to be even more structured. So there's a lot of planning, a lot of time required and a lot of structure for, for all of these, I suppose, even the informal conversations are now need to be structured into into a plan for for remote working. Um, you know the and as well, so, you know, content again. The start, depending on the size of your organisation, some organisations have that technology and already had it, and other organisations are 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 only now trying to put something together because this is now lasting a lot longer than they would have expected, mm -hmm. um, and so they're now st starting to to do that piece of work. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're, we're uh, I'll just put, put one, one final sort of shadow just to see if there's any, any sort of final questions. Um, so we're obviously covered quite a bit of ground. Uh, Grace asked just in relation to uh, information for HR professionals. Uh, so say, you know, at, at all levels in terms of finding out, um, you know, you, you useful info that might be relevant for, for, for a company. And any particular resources that you, you, you guys find as, as a sort of a go-to, whether it's the CIPD or IBEC or... Yeah, actually, um, for us, so we're a member of, of IBEC and uh, I found that they've been fantastic as, as always. Um, yeah. So they've had weekly um, webinars. So um, I'm a member of the, the HR Managers Tech Forum. So we have weekly or fortnightly um, webinars where we can share our knowledge um, and also with, with direction as well from IBEC. So I found that to be a really, really useful resource. There's also um, the IBEC Knowledge Centre is available. So if you have a question, you can put in a call or an email to the IBEC Knowledge Centre and they'll come back and answer your query for you. Um, so I found that to be invaluable, not only through, through COVID, but just in general. Um, I would definitely recommend um, membership. Uh, I, I think it's been fantastic. Excellent. Very good. Great to hear. Yeah, no, I think, I think the industry bodies have done a huge amount um, of work and have been available for for companies. I think also what I, what also has been fantastic is the webinars such as this, where people are sharing their knowledge um, openly and um, and um, to help others. And I suppose I've seen a lot of organisations, law firms are doing a lot of it, um, a lot of um, HR consultancies and, and practices are doing it, recruiters, etc., and other businesses and as, and even local business forums. And I think that that is being it's a, it's, there's a there's a wealth of, of knowledge and information being shared out there for free, and people can click into. I mean, I must be doing a couple of webinars a week where I'm just coming in, you know, logging into them, being invited, you log in and you're, you're get, getting exposure to people both in Ireland, the UK, uh, global, because it's a global phenomenon. So that's, that's the, it, we're all connected in that, but there's so much resource out there. I think it's just a matter of getting out there to look. And then I think the other piece is that there's so much out there. It is about, you know, finding the, the pieces that are most relevant to you. And, um, we were talking about books, etc. earlier on, Paul, but actually from my perspective at the moment, it's about the bite size because there's, again, mm. back to the so much, mm. and I would read a lot of the, you know, Harvard Business Review of great articles. There's lots of particular, you know, specific speakers that can, particularly on the, I suppose, the, the, the people and emotional um, intelligence side where, you know, how, dealing with people and how can you, how can you get the most out of people and supporting them through difficult times. There's lots of information out there and I think it's, you know, whether through LinkedIn, uh, through some of the the um, business schools, um, so it, it really there's there's endless. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's I mean from a partnership perspective, one of the you know, and there has been some positives that that. Have, you know, come from uh, recent months, but we do find we spend, you know, 50, 60, you know, probably more of the time, percent of the time chatting to our clients about the sector, uh, connecting people, you know, chatting to people. And, and I think, I think as you guys described there, the sort of the industry forums, uh, we've one, one final quest, question there. I, I think it's from, um, from Michael. Uh, it's, it's maybe not an easy one. I, I can give it a crack first, but uh, how performance reviews now that managers are no longer sitting beside their team, are managers finding it difficult to appraise a team's performance? So, so not an easy one. Look, I, I think what Margaret described there about really analysing. So, so I, in our business, say we quarter one, quarter two, which we're coming to quarter three now. I think quarter one for most companies, the economy in arms is strong. You know that most businesses are probably moving in the right direction. Uh, so that was quarter one, quarter two. It's very hard to predict, and it's it's not traditional business circumstances that the volume of. Um, you know, business it isn't there necessarily. So probably more focusing maybe a little bit on habits in that regard. And, and maybe as Margaret said, sort of asking open questions of how, how, how is it going? So if this is 10 out of 10, 
where do you think we're at at the moment and what realistically can we look at for, 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 for quarter three? Um, and anything to add to that, guys, do you think? Uh, uh, well, I suppose I think that from my perspective the, and from, from talking to, to my clients, it's the, they're, they're shifting their focus to outcomes, um, which we talked about for a long time, but now it's happening. Because yeah. now it's not about the process of how you get it done. It's about it, it, it's the outcome that's important. And if, if, you know, if that means that my day looks different, it's not nine to five, but it's a different, but actually if I get the work done and the work is done, you know, required and the project is delivered, it's the outcome I'm measured on. I think yeah. that's really important in terms of mindset shift for people. And that's the appraisal. It's the, you know, you're appraising the outcome and then maybe working backwards. Okay. Yeah, I think um, that for, for performance uh, reviews since COVID, I think what we'll be looking at is that that flexibility piece, you know, and uh, we have to also shine light on ourselves and say, have have we as an organisation supported the individual? Have we been flexible in our approach with them? Because, you know, this is uncharted territory that, that we're in and, you know, different people have reacted differently. So I think in order to be fair to everybody, we need to look at the whole picture. And um, the outcome is, is absolutely important, but I think we need to look at the backstory as well um, for these reviews, just, just to see, um, you know, the, the situation behind that yeah brilliant so guys thank you very much I, I i really really appreciate your time i i've certainly found it fascinating i have to say i, I, hope, I hope some of our uh, attendees have obviously we're recording today and, and sharing it with lots of uh, interested people and anything we've missed do you think would be uh the, lots of gold nuggets in there and anything we haven't covered that you want to mention before we wrap up No, I, I just think that the key is, is communication um, from the business and, yeah. and, and led from, from the top down. And I think, you know, if you get that right, I think you're going a long way towards supporting your colleagues when they're working remotely. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And, and I, I, you know, it, it was interesting, you're both exactly on the same page in relation to that sort of clarity piece, um, you know, in terms of just the, the, the business leading from the front in terms of communication, yeah. you know, and, and, and being as clear as possible. And the reality is, it's very hard, you know, we all have our three year strategy or one year strategy. It is, you know, at the moment, it probably is, whether it's quarter to quarter or, 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 or month to month. Um, brilliant. Okay, guys, th th thank you very much for your time. I'll, I'll wrap up next.